It's my first time to preach in four weeks. And uh, Rachel asked, <laughs> Rachel said, Would you, do you want me to introduce you? You know. I said, I think I'd be all right, but uh, Tuesday morning, really early, I was seeking the, the Lord, and uh, that's not the unusual part. I try to live that way. I just always want to know what he's thinking and what he's doing, and I said, God, what do you want me to say? What's your word to the church? What's your church? What's your word to the nation? What's your word to people? And it was very simple, but it became a little complex. He said, tell them to stay focused. He's tell them to stay very focused. Very focused. The old saying is, it's darkest just before the dawn. We are moving into a time when it's not just evil, it is very evil. It's not just dark, it's very dark. And that darkness is presenting itself in ways that are very challenging. And you and I cannot be summer soldiers. We can't be ceremonial warriors. We are going to have to live our faith persevering, standing, focused. So I want to talk uh, to you a few minutes from my heart. I don't know everything that I want to say. I've tried, but it's not working. But we cannot allow this present darkness to blind our thinking. And we must set ourselves to win one of the greatest battles our nation has ever presented. <clears throat> it was 1978, 46 years ago. I was a student in Bible school at Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas. The guest speaker teaching us that day was a pastor. Back then they always, they would bring in pastors from around the nation to speak to us. And this, this man made a statement that I wrote on the inside cover of my Bible. It's a Bible I still have on the shelf behind my desk. And the statement was this, never doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. I couldn't tell you how many times I've practiced that statement. Never doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light, in the good times, in the study times, in the everyday normal times. In those years, I have passed through some very dark times on occasion. Most people I know that have lived for any length of time have also passed through a few dark times. Times when I couldn't see my way forward. Times when a dark thundercloud obscured, obscured my vision and I had to just keep walking in the direction that, that I was headed when when the storm rose by faith, according to what Holy Spirit, according to what King Jesus, according to what my Father had shown me in the light. Times when groping or feeling my way along, trusting what God showed me in days of light, trusting a promise a promise that he made when there was no storm. In dark times, I, I had to learn. Pause. 
Still yourself, refocus, refocus your attention and remember what God said. Reflect on what he has said. Meditate, fill your mind with promises he has given. Don't obsess with darkness. Don't look at the dark time. Don't look at its vastness. Stop and remember what God has shown you in the light. If you don't do that, then the darkness causes disillusionment. The darkness can cause fear and you find yourself moving by fear, not faith. The darkness could cause hopelessness. It could cause doubt. I've remembered that simple but powerful statement so many times. Not that the days of my, my life have, have seen a majority of dark times, thankfully, Believers don't suffer that way, and I'm not saying that today. I want to be redemptive in everything I'm saying. But there have been a few. There have been a few. And I've had to draw on a joy that is beyond the natural realm. A peace that is beyond the natural realm and walk by faith, trusting what God has promised me. King David describes this faith pilgrimage, saying in Psalms 112 and verse 4, the darkness attempts to overwhelm me. It is almost overwhelming. But in Psalms 27 and verse 1, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? David said, uh, he said, I reflect on my bed in the night seasons I reflect the bigness of God. I reflect the goodness of God. I, I reflect upon the graciousness, the mightiness, the awesomeness of God's steadfast love and his steadfast word. And it never fails. This at times happens also in a corporate way. This at times happens in nations Dark times can present themselves. Mystifying times. Nonsensical times. I found myself for many weeks now grieved concerning the darkness rising in our nation. Dark evil is a cloud that is now rising. Appalling evil is rising. I have wakened in the night on several occasions now, pray, catching myself or waking myself, praying out loud for our nation. Several times I have awakened praying out loud in other tongues for our nation against the darkness, the darkness that seems to be enveloping things. I have been burdened over the wickedness that is arrogantly being promoted, lies that are being promoted, perhaps you have felt that burden. And I have time and time again said, I never thought that I'd see that in America. I never thought I would hear that. I would never, I never thought I would see that in so-called churches. I never thought I would hear statements from the body of Christ that I am hearing. One night as I awoke praying for the nation, praying for change, praying for repentance, I remembered the words of an old Bob Dylan song he was a singer and songwriter back when I was in high school and they actually did good music, but uh, that's another. He, he was singing about the darkness that our generation faced initially, uh, initially during the, the Vietnam War when we were being lied to and thousands of our generation was, was killed. But the line that I remembered that night was, it's not dark yet, but it's getting there. It's not dark yet, 
but it's getting there. And I laid there in the dark and I thought, Bob Dylan, we got there. And then after, after that, a day or so after that, a feeling this, I don't know if you've, there's times I don't know how to describe it. There are times when intercessory burden comes upon me and I don't know how to describe it, but it comes upon me and I feel it. I wear it. I, I am praying it off, not in a hopeless way. I know God is going to do something. But after a day or so of feeling this, I lay on the bed another night like David 3,000 years ago as darkness seems to be overwhelming. And I remembered, never doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. Never doubt in the dark. On purpose, I began to remember all the words of God that he has given to us. All of them I could think of. All of the prophetic words. All of the promises that he has taught us. And as I rehearsed one after the other, must have been a, an hour or more. The next morning, one of those words was amplified to me. I was watching the news before I came into the office and former President Trump was in a motorcade going to the court uh, for a trial, a sham of a trial, a disgraceful trial. He's been put on trial by an unjust, an, in, an unjust justice system, two-tiered, one that's unfair, one that disregards our laws, our constitution, one that will affect Americans. It'll affect the poor. It'll affect most of us. One that already has affected Christians. One that will affect churches. One that has politicized laws against political opponents, often called lawfare. And I thought as I watched I never thought that I would see that in America. I never thought I would see election interference like this. I never thought I would see America become a banana republic like Cuba or a third world nation. And as I watched, one of the commentators said, this is the first time in America's history that a president has been put on trial. And then he added, this is a very dark time in America's history. Injustice is, is being championed in our courts. I stood there watching and agreed, thinking injustice is going to oppress millions and millions of people. What am I going to do about this? What am I going to say? It's going to hurt a lot of people. But then on my way into the office, as this was going on, I began to remember a word Holy Spirit gave to me three years ago as I prayed against injustice. I probably said it here a time or two or somewhere around the nation. Holy Spirit said, as my ecclesia prays and declares its faith, I will prepare a moment and I will lance the boil of injustice in America for I am a God of justice and it will not hinder the reaping of my harvest with threats attempting to silence my words. Did you ever think that you would live in, in America in a time when the words that God says is now labeled as hate speech? The exact words God says 
is now labeled as hate speech, declare them, you could be incarcerated for them. And I thought, could this be that moment? I don't pretend to know all that God is, is doing right now, but I do know this. He will not allow injustice to stifle the effort of his greatest harvest. He will not do that. I do believe he is still in control and doing more than we probably even know about. I do believe he's watching over his word to perform it. I do know there will not fail one word of all of his promise. I do know he knows how to overwhelm darkness with his glorious light. I do know he didn't, he didn't covenant with this nation to preach the gospel into all the world to allow injustice to intimidate and to silence us. I do know. His prophetic words will come to pass. Words like he promised through the prophet Isaiah, a word resounding to the king's ecclesia in our times, filled with meaning that we've got to get and one that we must stay focused upon. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 and 2 it's filled with a magnificent promise. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen on you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but, but the Lord shall rise on you, and his glory will be seen, seen on you. New, new uh, Living Translation, verse 2. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. Amplified Bible. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new, new life, shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all people, but the Lord shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Seen, seen on you, seen upon you. The word darkness is the Hebrew word koshak, means misery or it means destruction. It means wickedness. Koshak means ignorance or abundant, wis uh, abundant ignorance. It also means falsehood. This is a time, this is a time like that without a doubt. It is a day of misery, of groaning. It's a day of destruction. Our economy is being destroyed. Our laws, our education system, our, our justice system, our rights, our values, even parental rights are being destroyed. It is a day of celebrated, celebrated wickedness. It's a day of extreme ignorance, astounding ignorance. We have graduates from uh, some of our greatest colleges, Ivy League schools, Graduates that cannot tell you who our first president was. Highly educated ignorance. We see ignorance that believes falsehoods or lies. Men can be women. Women can be men. Men can have babies. I never thought I would hear that. And I never thought I would see a couple of those on our president's Council, astounding dumbness as prophesied. I identify as a he or a, a, a she or a they or now a cat or a dog or a horse. And that ignorant is, ignorance is celebrated, celebrated on the lawn of the White House or some governor's mansions. Then the two words... Gross darkness. Gross darkness will cover the people. That's the Hebrew word 
Erephel. Erephel means gloom or it means gloominess, thick, dark clouds. It also means thunder clouds that, that spin, rotate. In other words, producing tornadoes or twisters. Arepho, Arephel metaphorically refers to the Hebrew people as clouds that frown. Frowning clouds, foreboding skies. Referencing days that put a frown on the face of people. Who can deny that these are days when you see people just walking around doing everyday life and that frown is there. But, but never doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. The promise continues and the promise is light is coming. Glory is coming. Oh, uh, light's coming, Ecclesia. The glory of the Lord will come upon you in times of gross, Arafel, dark times. The glory of the Lord will be seen on you. The glorious presence of the Lord will be seen over us. Stay focused. Remember what he has said. He never lies. Pray. Turn from your wicked ways and I'll heal your land. He knows how to bring supernatural, transformational, reformation. He knows how to bring forth a new era. Stay focused. We're being called to stand in these challenging times with a confident a confident faith that rests itself upon the brilliance of God, holding relentlessly to unwavering meanings that God's word speaks into difficult times. That's now a part of our call. Holding on to the redefinition God's word brings into confusion, into disorder. The restructuring that prophetic words bring over time, over time. They are not instant, it's over time. To the disorder, it speaks order to dysfunctional evil. The hammering destruction, the proclamation of God's word brings to evil is something that we must allow our focus it must get our attention, the hammering destruction that, that the proclamation of God's word brings to evil. Jeremiah 23, 29, is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks to pieces. Message Bible, Jeremiah 23, 29, is, isn't my message like fire, God's decree? Isn't it like a sledgehammer busting rocks? Amplified Bible is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test. And like a hammer that breaks in pieces the rocks of most stubborn resistance. We are in a time when the true church, the ecclesia, must stand in the face of darkness. And we must stand in the face of stubborn resistance and declare the fire-filled power words of Almighty God. We are, we are in times when we must swing the sledgehammer of God's word against evil and trust that that word is going to bust that evil to pieces. It's going to bust it we must proclaim the prophetic words of Holy Spirit that he has given for our times, trusting his, William, his wisdom, trusting his, his brilliance to produce it. Jeremiah 1.10, God says to Jeremiah what he says to the ecclesia Christ is building today. An ecclesia is building to rule and to reign with him, giving us authority to bind or to loose, to 
forbid or permit in the earth realm in his name, Matthew 16, 18, and 19. We are to be a prophetic voice to the nation as Jeremiah was saying what God says. Jeremiah 1.10, hear the will of God. This is actually in the Bible. Hear the purpose of God. New Living Translation, Jeremiah 1.10, I have put my words in your mouth and I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must, you must build up and plant. Can there be any doubt that in our nation we must uproot some things? Now that's not easy. I wish it were. I wish it were. I wish I was preaching something very easy. I wish I could, I would preach after four weeks something that would get you up and run in the aisles, but it's often hard. We can't be ceremonial warriors. Sometimes it's difficult and requires bold faith, strong faith, because we do at times face stubborn resistance, demonic resistance, which is happening right now. There is a stubborn resistance, but it doesn't diminish our call or our authority to uproot it. Uproot it anyway. Uproot it anyway. Standing for what God says will uproot it. It will tear it down over time as we stand in faith and decree his promise. Decree his, his prophetic words. Pray and not back down. There are some things that are just going to have to be torn down and destroyed. That is the job of the ecclesia. And the word of God says this, and some government wickedness you're going to have to overthrow. Strong words. You're going to have to throw them out. Most certainly this is not going to be done by passive Christianity. It is not going to be accomplished by cowards in the pulpit or woke in name only Christians in the pews. Only those who dare trust their God would embrace that kind of call. But Holy Ghost is making it. And he told me Tuesday morning, tell them, dare them, call them to stay focused. Don't back down now. Only those who trust their God would dare embrace that call. Hence, only a remnant has. But thankfully, that remnant is growing. And they are leaving compromising churches by the droves. Thankfully, there are those who are holding on to what God says. Yes, we are facing stubborn resistance, fierce resistance, but we have been promised in the light. We have been promised America will be saved. We have been promised we will win if, if we don't faint. In due season, we win. God's word says to Jeremiah, the prophetic voice to the nation in his days. What he says to the ecclesia. The prophetic voice in our days. Jeremiah 1.10, the Amplified Bible. I have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations. Please hear that. It's, it's in the Bible. I have appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms 
to root out and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Oversight, I'm giving you authority oversight. I've given you oversight in my name over nations. Our spiritual kingdom has been, get, been given authority or oversight over nations and over kingdoms. It's not my word. It's not, those are not my words. They are God's word. And we also hear our king say similar things in Matthew 16 and 18. Whatever hell's counsel or government brings, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm calling you, I'm anointing you to overcome it, to forbid it. Those who dare ask the ecclesia in our times or send their letters or whatever they do, who gave you the authority to speak like that? God did. God tells his ecclesia to do this. I'm giving you oversight. Listen to the message Bible. See what I've done? I've given you a job to do among the nations and governments. Your job is to pull down and, or pull up and tear down, take apart and demolish, then start over building and planting. Yes, we have a job to do. I don't know how many places I could preach that because most Christians don't want a job to do, but I've given you a job to do. That's not just Old Testament again. Our king said those words also. Only in the New Testament, it's greater authority. We've been given greater authority now. Passion Bible, I have put my words in your mouth. I have imparted to you great authority. I've imparted to you great authority over nations and governments to uproot and demolish, to destroy and dismantle, and you will plant and build something new. Holy Spirit speaking through us prophetically, speaking through us promises, speaking through us words of powerful authority over nations, over governors, imparts dunamis and the power of God that can destroy, uproot and tear down. The Hebrew language which is pictorial, it pictures this, this meaning as to preside over. To preside over. We are called to preside over from a spiritual dimension, empowered by God's word, empowered by Holy Spirit. We are called to preside in the name of our king and influence the natural nations, the natural kingdoms from a very bold and powerful spirit realm. We are not serving in a phantom kingdom. We are not. It's, it's very real kingdom. Our authority is not phantom. It is very real and, and in the name of our very Real kingdom king Jesus, that authority is administered. I'm calling you to preside over the nations. Preside over the evil. Preside over evil kingdoms. Take my word. Uproot it. Tear it down. Bust it up. Overthrow. Make your stand. It's not phantom. In his name, our job is to battle against evil and overcome it. Again, that's not easy to do. When facing turmoil in a nation, that's not easy. Perilous times aren't easy. It's not easy to change history. It's not easy to take back what's been stolen. 
It's not easy to overthrow entrenched evils. It's not easy to battle demonic princes for the soul of a nation. It's not easy to be lights in the darkness. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. There's going to be some trouble, but stay cheerful. I've denied it, its right or its power over you. My true ecclesia, my true ecclesia will conquer. My, my true ecclesia will prevail. Keep focused on what I say. Keep focused on what I say, not the taunts of your enemies. Stay focused on what the Godhead has promised, not the arrogant lies of reprobate leaders, reprobate government, lying justice, or cultural mountains. Never doubt in the dark what I have shown you in light. In this dark time, Remember, remember this word, and then I'm going to pray it. It's one of those that I remembered, and I want to say it today. Remember this word. The Lord of hosts decrees. That's the Lord of angel armies. The Lord of hosts decrees. I have commissioned Michael to release sufficient warriors from his army to assist my ecclesia and unlock America. Stay focused. They will swing the battering rams of heaven energized by your decrees of my word. Stay focused. I will release explosive power against entrenched evil. No longer will its wicked conspiracy be swept under the rug. I am pulling the corrupt rug off of it. I will expose diabolical plans. It will be seen clearly. I say your rug will now become your burial shroud. I will bury your plans. Your tombstone reads by my own words, vanquished. How long will that take place? I don't know. However long it takes, we stand. My ecclesia and my angel armies will explode on your strongholds and destroy them, sending shock waves around the earth. I will release sweeping change I will release sweeping change across the nation and I will break the back of demon princes and they will not stand. Yes, I will un unravel hell's plans. I will unravel your cover up. I will unravel the coup. I will unravel your conspiracy. I will unravel your diabolical dynasties. I will deal with injustice. The Lord of hosts decrees to his uncompromising ecclesia, rise in confidence for I have opened portals throughout the land and what I open, no one can close. I am opening heaven's windows over the earth realm and from these portals of glory, you will experience power flows of my mightiness. I am releasing spiritual hurricanes, a rushing mighty wind blowing through the land, propelled by Holy Spirit and his angel armies. And it will blow away the plans of the forever loser. Through the land, plans of darkness will be overthrown. And it will be, and it will uproot iniquity. It will uproot doctrines of demons. It will blow the lid off lies. It will blow the lid off deception. It will expose demonic dictators and blow the lid off Jezebel government. Stay focused. My angels are riding the winds, pulling the ropes 
of change. I am turning the tide from my people. I'm turning the battle. I'm turning the war. I am overturning unrighteousness, overturning injustice, and overruling Leviathan in the media giants. I am move after move ahead of hell's kingdom. Stay focused. I want to ask the singers and the musicians to come, and I'm going to pray some very bold prayers now because I've been asked to. And I'm going to ask you to come into agreement with that. And even those of you that are watching around the nation or world, come into agreement. It's not the time when we put our hands to the plow and back off. It's not time for the faint of heart. It's time to do some things God says. It's time to preside, preside with power. Stand, if you will. Lord, I... I I have communicated what you gave me so that we could come to this moment to preside. The ecclesia rises now, not just in this house, but across this nation and world. Apostles and prophets speaking into the times now rise to preside in the name of King Jesus, over gross darkness, gross evil. Slam it with your hammer, God, and break it. Break the hold of evil darkness, we declare, off this nation. Break it off. Overthrow leaders of darkness. Throw them out. In the name of King Jesus. Break the strongholds as your church rises now in the face of darkness to declare the glorious light. And as the darkness begins to penetrate or come against, rise upon us with your glory. May the glory of the King be seen upon us. May the glory of the King be seen upon your church, rising, declaring against darkness. You cannot win. You will not win. Your plans will be overthrown. All the dark strategies, we come against it now in the name of King Jesus. Implode. Turn it such a way, Lord, that they begin to bite and devour one another. We pray, God, for the hammer of your prophetic words that we have declared and declared promises. We have declared and declared to now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, begin to hammer darkness, hammer evil, hammer liars, hammer their dark strategies, hammer the injustice, hammer, hammer it. May the ecclesia pick up the sledgehammer of your word and begin to preside as you have called us to do. Preside over the darkness and command it to go. Receiving the infusion of glory in such a way that we're the light of the world and we light that darkness. Let a boldness rise. A bold knowing in your warriors, individually and corporately, of who they are. A boldness rise to the individual warriors. You're authorized. You're authorized. God authorized you. 
He authorized you to preside over times of darkness and release glorious light. He authorized you to rise and reap a harvest out of that darkness like the world has never seen. May the, may the ecclesia now rise, understanding that just as Jesus the King presides over his kingdom and over the affairs of man and over the affairs of nations and kingdoms, we are seated with him to preside with him. May the true church rise and begin to preside over this nation and over the kingdoms of this world, releasing the truth that makes free, releasing light that overcomes darkness. May that church arise in every state and preside over those territories governing with the abilities of the Holy Ghost, understanding it's not phantom power. It's not phantom authority. It is the authority of the living God. Preside, church. Preside. Preside for the King. Preside over wickedness. Overthrow rulers of darkness. Preside. Preside over wickedness. Preside over the darkness. Rise, shine. Your lights come. Rise and preside. Rise and preside. Ecclesia, rise and preside in the name of the King. Preside over the ignorance. Preside over the extreme ignorance. Preside with truth. Preside with truth. Preside with the spirit of truth against the spirit of darkness, the spirit of lies, lying spirits. Preside against them. Preside of, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Rise and preside. Rise and preside against presumptuous evil. Wickedness personified. Evil in government. Preside over it, Ecclesia. Rise and preside, and I will overturn it. I will turn the battle. I will turn the injustice. I will release spiritual hurricanes that will destroy, tear down, uproot, overthrow. So we say to evil, we will not back down, we will preside. We will preside over this period of time and whatever it takes, we'll preside. However long it takes, we will preside our King will infuse us with joy. He will infuse us with peace. Even in this present darkness, He will infuse us with life that's abundant. You will not preside over us. We pre preside over you in the name of Jesus. Let this be a turning point in the days of the ecclesia of this time. Rise and preside as I have told you. I have given you oversight over the nations and kingdoms. Use it, use it in my name and you will see the great times of change, a history, a, a change of history 
as I have said would come. Don't doubt in the dark what I showed you in the light. Don't back off in the dark what I told you in the light. Don't back down whatever hell throws at you what I said. Arise and preside. Thank you, Lord. May the bold representation of Holy Ghost in your church now release a prevailing anointing of great authority. You said it was great, great authority. Holy Spirit, soak, soak your people in this, soak your church in this, soak it everywhere. May every ecclesia, every kingdom stronghold rise in their region and preside in the name of Jesus. So we will receive the flow of your mightiness now. We will receive those winds you promised. And we will see glory even in the darkness. We will rise and we will win. We will rise and we will win. Amen. I said it was individual and corporate. Those of you in the room that you may say, well, I want to be one of those warriors in the corporate room, but I'm going through a dark time myself. It's a dark time for me. Whatever that dark time is, I'm here to tell you, we're going to preside over it today. If it's demonic, we're going to break that assignment. We're going to release the hammer of God's word over your life and set you free. I don't know what your darkness may be. It may be sickness, disease. It could be anything. But I do know this. Don't doubt in the dark what God showed you in the light. What did he talk to you about? You say, well, I've just, he's told me this and he's told me that and he's told me that this, but all I see is darkness. Well, Come on down, because we're going to release the word of the Lord to you. I feel like hammering some things. I feel like hammering some tormenting spirits. I feel like telling darkness, you've got to let them go. Stop it. I feel like presiding today. May this be a demarcation day. Where the real church rises to preside. So we receive this Lord of you. This word, Holy Spirit, steward us, steward it in us. Huh. Yeah, I pray for champions, Lord, that I'll take hold of this one. I pray for some Davids to rise and take hold of this one. Arise and preside. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We say yes. We'll do our best. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you for being here today. Appreciate it so much. Continue to steward this word. Pray into it. I believe that I believe Holy Spirit's going to talk to you individually. Not just corporately, but individually. And I think a great boldness of authority is going to rise. We're going to see it in the marketplace. We'll see it everywhere. It's time. 
Amen. Amen. Bless you. Have a great rest of your day.